just something about your swagger after leaving the barber shop. The confidence, the compliments. It's really crazy how people react after, before they get a haircut and after they get a haircut. You'll start seeing them taking selfies. At this barber shop in Lexington, Kentucky, cuts are on the house. Whether it's a fresh fade or a summer buzz, this barber just wants you looking good and feeling good. And he hopes his clippers can cut into some of the unemployment his clients are experiencing. It will boost their confidence and will give them an opportunity to go out to get a job or get back to their job. He's giving away the free cuts every other Sunday. He just wants to be there like the community's been there for him. I'm an independent, this is not franchise, and the community have been supporting my business and my family and my other guys that's been working with me in the shop for six years. And I feel like this is a good opportunity and a good time for us to give back to the community. Whether you're curly or balding, long hair or short, ginger or blonde, we're here for you. Styling up a half hour of positivity, this is good to know. Have to create a better tomorrow today. Things can change. You just have to have an open heart and you know and quit using all this negativity. Still on the loose. Are you kidding? Like it doesn't feel real. It seems like a movie just going on. It it just warms my heart. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> This is my happy place. This is, is my happy place. Hey everybody, this is Good to Know and I'm your host, Lindsay Boach. We have storytellers all across the country meeting inspiring people who are dedicated to doing good in their communities. And today we start in Cincinnati with some people who are sharing their patriotism and passion. From a garrison flag in Williamstown, Kentucky, a Marine Corps veteran's front yard in Erlanger, to streets lined in Megan Shaw's neighborhood in Willowville, Ohio, and those who just like to drop in from the sky. Many of you love to show off old glory. I was born on July 4th, <laughs> so it's a big deal for me. For Air Force veteran Joe Baker, respecting the flag when flown is one thing. When it's seen its final days... Take them down when they start fading or getting tattered. He's a member of the American Legion Post 318 in Anderson. Well, that one needs to be retired. One of many veteran posts who conduct special ceremonies to retire old tattered and faded flags. To respect it and, and then give it a whole ceremony around a flag, you know, in general, so people won't throw them in the trash. We'll retire them respectfully. With a hot fire in place, they team up with the local Boy Scouts. Who will go out and talk about what the stars mean what the blue means, what the red and the white mean. Members of the community are also encouraged to dedicate the retirement of an old flag to those who've served. Put it in the, in the fire to, to retire and say, you know, I'm dedicating this to my dad who was in World War II. While some flags have seen their last wave, flags like Terrence Harrison's and Patricia Zanich's in Cincinnati or Lana's in Butler County may just need a little TLC. They'll be pressed over here, maybe steamed out. If that's the case, you might think about paying a visit to Josh Pinky. I'm a vet, and, you know, it's, it's a very small thing I can do to pay for. A former Army infantry captain who now owns Zips Dry Cleaners in Oakley, where they offer up free flag cleaning. We've been offering it from day one. You don't even have to buy anything. It's not like free with purchase or anything like that. You know, fire departments bring these huge flags up, and it's cool knowing that, yeah, that, zip, that flag came through Zips. We had a small part. Now it's... At, not only just flying on maybe a, a flagpole, but a lot of their ceremonies and funerals and that sort of thing too. I have been coming out here since the fall, every weekend. On a farm in Doswell, you'll find a team of therapists, unlike most others, experts working wonders. They can sense your tension. They can sense stress. They can sense sadness. Good boy. Good boy. Becky Jameson isn't learning to become a ranch hand. We're human, 
and what we see and what we deal with every day, it, it does affect us. It does, it does take its toll. The Richmond Ambulance Authority veteran is healing with horses. We have to make sure that these places are available for us and for people in our line of work. Checkpoint One invites first responders and veterans to free themselves of stress on 33 acres. Just being able to have that space, no matter what they do, to, to just release and relax and get outside. The nonprofit offers non-riding equine therapy, mindfulness, yoga, fishing, in archery. Services that we provide are invaluable and we love everything that we do. Iraq War veteran Andy Kaufman founded Checkpoint One four years ago. I do it in memory of, of all of the friends that I've lost in combat and to suicides and uh, it just, I can't picture myself doing anything else. So I'm seeing a lot of isolation and I'm seeing a lot of people who lost their coping skills. The group's so, mental health yeah, director Mary Margaret Signorelli says the hidden burden shouldered by first responders can wreak havoc. So if you need help and you haven't told anybody yet, tell somebody, tell anybody. It doesn't matter who it is, but don't carry it all by yourself. This therapy doesn't cost first responders a penny. Oh boy. Checkpoint One runs on donations and grants which have dried up during the pandemic. The nonprofit has only enough money through the fall. After October, all bets are off. And it's hard because we don't want to stop. We, we can't stop. Will Shoemate says the farm has been his savior. This is my happy place. This is, is, is my happy place. The Henrico firefighter with 24 years of service has helped countless people. We see them on their worst day. Over time, that just builds up. But Will found salvation from the most unlikely pair of friends, Donkey and Izzy. Don't be that person that says, I am too good for this. Reach out to make sure that you get some help. Will says the experts at Checkpoint One, whether on two legs or four, never judge and always listen. Everything that we learn here is totally transportable to the real world, both professionally and personally. Sometimes our stories take us around the world, like a family in Ecuador who's breathing easier thanks to the kindness of some strangers. Hi, hola Wilson, hola. Little Wilson will be 18 months old next week, an age half of kids with central nuclear myopathy don't get to see. At the beginning, they didn't get any diagnosis, so there was five months till they got the diagnosis, and at the, the first month, it was very uncertain what's gonna happen. These children are born very weak, uh, the majority of them do not breathe spontaneously on their own. They cannot eat orally. They cannot sit up on their own. Which means they need a ventilator, something that just a few weeks ago was in short supply in the U.S. and nearly impossible to find in Wilson's home country of Ecuador. Allison Fraze's son Joshua was born with a type of CNM in 1995. He passed away 15 years later. Since then, she started an equipment exchange program. And that's the first family that we have in Ecuador because uh, normally the, the children there with this kind of diseases, they uh, unfortunately they don't survive because there's no the equipment. Former Ecuadorian Jen Bilbao started a similar nonprofit in Germany and after posting information on the condition online in Spanish, <laughs> Wilson's parents had hoped that they could get help. She was very desperate because uh, she thought she's gonna be at the hospital her whole life. So Jen contacted Allison in the U.S. I knew I had um, a ventilator from unfortunately a child, uh, a, actually a young man that had passed this year. And I reached out to that mom. She said, absolutely, you can have it. That ventilator from a family in Utah, the plug, connectors, and other parts from another family in Utah, and the humidifier from a family in Texas. All of those things were shipped to Jen's brother, who still lives in Ecuador, to bring to the family. For Wilson's parents, this gift is more than just a medical device. So it was not only a breath for their child, but a breath for them because they were, yeah, they, they didn't know what to do. And to know that somebody's gonna help, it was like, uh, 
yeah, very peaceful. Several people from all across the world in a crisis of their own, no, no. helping to save a little boy's life they've never met. There's still so much more that's good to know, including tiny weddings that are becoming a big hit.